Hello, I'm Jason with Cerakote. Today, we will be performing a parameter test on our Teichma Mini Lays XL Fiber Laser. A parameter test is a powerful tool for laser imaging. The parameter test takes two variables of your choosing and creates an XY parametric grid so you can see their effect while laser imaging your chosen Cerakote laser optimized color. Before we begin, it is important to highlight that our goal here is to present a standard operation to develop the settings for your laser, not to list a bunch of specific settings. Since there are many variables, it just isn't helpful. So if we do list some settings, just know that every project and laser is different. The Cerakote colors you use and your laser setup will all greatly impact the results you see. We have settled on power and frequency today because it is the most common adjustment in laser imaging. By the end of the parameter test, you will know what colors or hues you can achieve through laser imaging and will have settings coarsely dialed in to replicate those colors and hues for future projects. It is of note that not all colors will achieve the same variety of hues or color changes. Let's begin. Apply your Cerakote color to a steel panel. Launch Material Parameter Assistant, which is integrated within MiniLays Pro 3 and is included with all Tecma lasers. However, these terms and concepts are valid for other laser systems as well. Next, firmly affix your panel under the laser. For today's demonstration, we will create a 7x10 grid of squares for our parameter test. It is helpful to understand that even though we are utilizing a grid of squares, we are actually creating a gradient of both settings and results to analyze. The same parameter test can be repeated with other variables adjusted to see how those parameters affect laser imaging. Those could be speed, frequency, power, loop count, and pulse width. Now, within the Material Parameter Assistant, under the Basic Parameter section, we will see the drop-down menus for both X and Y axis on our parameter test. Here, we can set the row count, size, and spacing of squares. We will input 7 for X count, 10 for Y count. We will set the size to 5 millimeters and the spacing to 1 millimeter. Now we have created a 7 by 10 grid of squares. Next, we will use the mapping dropdown under both the X and Y sections. This is where we select what setting to apply to each axis on our parameter test. For today's test, we will be selecting frequency for X and power as Y. Then, under the mapping dropdown, we will set two other fields labeled start value and increment value. Let's start with power. Here, we will set our start value to 10 and our increment value to 10. This will set our first square to 10 and increase the value by 10 for each square after until the total number of squares matches the y-axis count that we input earlier. So 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 100. Please note, if you don't have your xy count high enough, you won't ever reach 100% power. For our x-axis, we set the start value to 500 and increment value to 750. So each square frequency increases by 750 kilohertz. Once this is done, we do not need to map each individual laser setting to each square. Last, we will enable a hatch setting. This sets the type of laser path used to fill in each square. For most projects, a bi-directional pattern can be selected. Now we can run the parameter test. Analyze the results, adjust, and repeat until you have a full resolution color change with no gaps or spaces. We don't want to burn the coating, nor do we want to remove the coating. Using the back of a fingernail is a great way to tell if you have removed any coating, as you shouldn't feel any ridges. Once the test is complete, you should have enough of a range to see where the sweet spot of hue and color choices are for your given power and frequency settings. Generally, you can find the ideal range between the burnt squares on the upper end and too light where the laser affected little to no color change on the lower end. So, to summarize, we are finding the target range of each of these parameters within each coding color and presenting them visually on a grid for you to assess and implement into your design. In general, working with narrow pulse widths, high frequencies, and faster speeds 
will yield better results. We have found that setting other variables such as a 2 nanosecond pulse width, a 0.5 millimeter line spacing at 3000 millimeters per second is a great place to start. From there, just fine tune using frequency and power to finalize your parameter test results. Let's look at the results. After our testing, we settled on two hues in the 1250 kilohertz grid with a power of 20% for one and 30% for the other. From there, documenting results and settings into a recipe can help you plan and execute your design to your specifications. Perform a parameter test for each Cerakote laser optimized color you are using in your pattern. From there, it is as simple as using the settings to the square that matches your design requirements. As your catalog of settings increases in size, you become ever more efficient as you learn, a powerful trade-off well worth the effort. Whether you are matching a previous design or holding true to the original inspiration, once you find a color result that you like, just use the setting from that square and you are ready to input those on that color layer. Though we have focused on single color application today, it is possible to ablate through a top coat and reveal multiple base coats of other Cerakote optimized colors, giving you even more customization options. Feel free to research and experiment. Next time, we will highlight pattern design and outputting a DXF file to your Tecma laser. Lastly, Cerakote is actively building a laser ecosystem and a support system offered nowhere else. We are here to help and look forward to assisting you along the exciting journey. So please like and subscribe to get more laser content. Now that you know more about Cerakote laser imaging, we cannot wait to see what you come up with.